so thanks everyone. My name is Timo Wilhelm. I'm a solution architect with the um, Cloud for Developer platform based in Munich. Um, many of you are maybe know Cloudflare for the CDN. Uh, maybe you don't know that we have also a really good developer cloud platform. And today I want to talk about one of my favorite products in the developer platform for Cloudflare and how I can help you build amazing collaboration tools and local first applications. Quick check in the audience through objects. How many of you have heard of them? OK, awesome. So about half of you. Uh, so to set the stage, um, we're going to do like the, easy, the, the quintessential, quintessential local first application. We're going to build Google Docs. Um, I'm going to build my own Google Docs. It's going to be amazing. Uh, now, I want to build it in a local first way so I can support offline edits. Um, so this is familiar to all of you. Uh, I need to sync my states. What can I do? Um, it's probably the same for all collaborative apps. And you're probably screaming it right now, obviously. Uh, one of those solutions could be CRDTs. I could be using them to um, share my data types, um, do the merging. Now, unfortunately, I'm not smart enough to program CRDTs, so I am very thankful that there's a lot of smart people investing a lot of time into building uh, CRDT libraries like, for example, YJS or AutoMerge, and I'm Martin Sear, so a big fan of those. For today, we're going to be looking at YJS for our implementation, primarily driven by Kevin Jans. Um, the nice part about YJS, it is a network agnostic protocol, and it already has a very nice WebSocket sync provider. Now, how this usually works is you have two pieces of code. One of them is a client you run in your um, browser app or your mobile app. The other one is a server app you run um, on a Node.js server deployed somewhere. Um, so that server part where it says server, can we make that server less? Um, I think so, and uh, I think we can do it by building on top of the Cloudflare broker platform. So I'm going to pitch you why you can build um, serverless sync providers on durable objects and then tell you that you probably shouldn't do it. Um, so why would I want to deploy anything on the Cloudflare Brokers platform? Um, if you've deployed anything on Cloudflare, you know um, one thing that we really like about the platform. When you deploy there, it's going to deploy to pretty much the whole Cloudflare network. And one metric that we're really proud of is when you deploy there, you basically within 50 milliseconds of the vast majority of all internet users. Um, so your work is going to run on pretty much every Cloudflare data center. It's currently covering around 300 cities in uh, over 120 countries. And we have a lot of storage products that you can use right out of the box in your worker products, like key value stores, object storage, or even SQL databases now. Now, these Cloudflare workers, they're not running containers, they're not running VMs, they're actually running in V8 isolates, which is the same technology that is browser, powering the browser tabs in your Chromium Brace browsers. Um, so they are incredibly start, fast to start up. As you can see here, um, it's going to start loading the worker immediately when the connection starts happening, and by the time your HTTP handshakes are finished, um, they're probably going to be loaded. So you have a platform that basically gives you zero cold start serverless. This doesn't mean you need to develop it all in JavaScript or TypeScript. We have bindings for Python, for Rust, C++, or pretty much anything that compiles to WebAssembly. And also, we have Node.js compatibility for many APIs, so it's easier to port your applications. Now, this is how probably 99% of applications look like today. You have a number of clients connecting to any number of application service, probably load balanced, and those connecting to either a central database or some read replica. Now, if you want to distribute this and build it with durable objects, we need to think about it a little bit different. So this is how it could look like on durable objects. Now, durable objects is all about bringing state to serverless applications. And there was a quote last year from Anselm uh, on his talk, uh, every app security wants to be local first, where he said, uh, local first is just a special case of distributed state. Now, these durable objects are very powerful building blocks for building distributed systems. The way it works is it combines a piece of your application code with a permanent and automatically provisioned SQLite database right there alongside your application. And it's going to be guaranteed to run on the same machine in the same process right there for your global object instances. These global objects are also serverless, so they can hibernate to save costs, and you're only going to be charged if they are actively processing requests. Now, this is all very theoretical. So what does a dual object actually look like? Let's take a look at some code. So this is how a simple dual object could look like. We have a class that extends the durable object-based class. We have a constructor 
that runs on initialization, either when the object is first created or when it's um, woken up from a hibernation. That's where you can set up your internal state of your object. And this class is actually defining a namespace, and you can then instantiate instances of this durable object um, by some user-provided key and refer to the same instance at a later point using that same key. And as you can see here, we have uh, a local SQLite database right there available through the context um, of the dual object. And if you look a little bit closely, something might look a bit strange about the database calls. There is not going to be any awaits on them because these database calls are all going to be completely sync. So the database is running on the same process, and that lets you get away with a lot of things you couldn't do with a network database. Like, if you look at this example of a database query, that's the type of query that usually gets you thrown out of a conference. Uh, so we can query all documents and then do a second query over all of them. This is on network database is going to have terrible performance, all the n plus one problem. But since we are running a database in the same process, those calls are going to be incredibly fast. So you can get away with a lot of um, interesting and simple, simpler data access in your Drupal objects. If you zoom out a little bit, um, you'll find out that your Drupal object looks a lot like a local first application, it takes a lot of inspiration. So you have data co-location, you have access to a very fast, persistent local data store, and each Drupal object instance is only processing a single request at a time. This means that the data uh, consistency is guaranteed, and it's going to do some smart tricks around detecting side, um, like side effects. So requests that don't involve the storage or anything else are going to be processed even faster. But we still want to be very fast. So with YJS, there is uh, this nice option to merge updates instead of actually keeping a YJS document on our server. So um, we want to be sure that all of our updates and all of our message handlers are going to be as fast as possible. But we can also use cron jobs. So we can have, for example, um, some interval like every 30 seconds. We're going to do a cleanup where we actually implement or instantiate a new YJS document. And we can do all of the garbage collection and maybe even persist it somewhere else. So we kind of solved the merging and state part. But what about serverless? So can we do this also in real time? So for this, um, we can re actually rely on the Cloudflare network. So we can use Cloudflare to manage all of the WebSocket connections. Uh, and Cloudflare is going to turn those into our uh, RPC calls on top of our in the durable object. What this means is that the durable object can actually go to sleep or hibernate while there is no activity on the network. And um, you're gonna have, you can have completely serverless WebSockets. Uh, let's take a look how this looks like. So you can see it's an extension of the standard WebSocket API. So we have a fetch handler where we can accept our WebSocket connections. And then we have a number of event handlers. For example, when we are getting new messages for our WebSockets, or the WebSocket has been closed. And we can also query who is currently connected to broadcast updates. Now, if you look at how this all comes together, then um, this would be an example of a full architecture for uh, a serverless um, YJS provider running on your Drupal object instances. Um, we have a client that is connecting by some unique ID. In this case, let's say every document or room is going to have a unique ID that's going to identify an instance of our Drupal object. Um, on there, we can then process the updates, store everything on our local SQLite database, and have some cron jobs, for example, that um, periodically do the vacuuming and persist it to some R2, where we can do things like uh, thumbnailing or support download for other applications. <coughs> so this is the part where I tell you probably not to do it, because uh, there's already uh, people that spend a lot of time to make this a production-ready approach. Um, so I would re really recommend you try check out PartyKit. Uh, it's a framework for building collaborative applications. Um, it's built on top of the Drupal object. Uh, you can deploy it right in your own Cloudflare account, and it has support for YJS and many other APIs. And the team behind it is actually joined Cloudflare that's been acquired, and um, they're trying to make it easier than ever now to build collaborative applications on durable objects. But I still did it anyway. So. Um, if you scan that QR code, you're going to see a demo application of a serverless YJS WebSocket provider hosting my Google Docs clone. Uh, it's going to give you a new room. Every one that scans it is going to get its own room. Uh, you can share it. There's going to be a link um, to share it with um, the QR code or a link. And um, 
yeah, I hope you can help me stress test Google Objects a bit tonight, uh, so, uh, today. So yeah, um, if you have any more questions, I know 10 minutes is very short for this uh, technology. Uh, please find us at the booth. We will be here around today and tomorrow. We also have some merch. So yeah, if you have any questions, happy to take those now.